Hello and welcome back to Super Mums. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about what things should not be on your to-do list. As always, please make sure you are liking, sharing and subscribing so we can reach more mums and help them enjoy their motherhoods too. Okay, so in an ideal world, we'd have nothing on our to-do list and they'd be empty and we'd be free to do whatever we wanted, whatever we wanted with our time. But that's not true, is it? There's always stuff. There's always stuff. There's always the things. There's always the many, many things. And there's always the people giving us more things. And obviously I've talked a lot about living your life your way and you selecting the things that you want in your life and having control about that. And that's not what this episode's about. What it is, is I keep seeing people will show me the to-do list because they're like, how do I ever get through this like massive list? And half of the things on there shouldn't be on there. Not because they shouldn't be in their life at all, but that they should be somewhere else. And these are what I refer to as tasks. Tasks. Tasks uh, for me are things like the laundry because that will keep coming back. Things that repeat on the whole shouldn't be on your to-do list. They should be pre-scheduled in your Google Calendar or your other chosen less awesome calendar because let's face it, I love Google Calendar. It should be pre-scheduled. Anything that repeats a lot should be scheduled as a set time. If you want to be more productive, if you want to reduce your to-do list, if you want to achieve the life you want, then I personally believe that this thing needs to be scheduled and not left on your to-do list. Yes, you can be like really pedantic and do two separate to-do lists if you want to and move the things that I'm gonna to mention today onto that other to-do list, but you will still not be reaching your maximum productivity unless you move this onto a scheduled thing. This is where having a digital calendar blows your mind because you can set like a little button and say repeat every third Tuesday of the month or repeat every Monday, Thursday and Saturday or repeat once a month on the first of the month. Like you can set those things and it will automatically put it in your calendar for the rest of time. And then you can move it once without it affecting any of the others too. It's good that. Or you can get to a new day and be like, oh, it's changing times and you can move it to a different time and get it to change to that different time from then onwards. It's really clever. And then it's already in your calendar. So when you go to like plan out the rest of your week, it's already in there. You're not trying to find a space for it. You're not being overwhelmed by it sat on your to-do list. This is a like a nice repeat item. These are your tasks. Laundry, food shopping. Always have to do the food shopping because we're always gonna need to eat. I mean, for me, we have a two week rolling food plan and I know what day I do the food shopping, I know what day I place the order for the food delivery, and then there are two shops that I go to, and I know what days I go to those and pick those up. Now some days, I do need to change that slightly or tweak that slightly, yeah, that happens. But on the whole, I know that there's a standard there, and at least when I look at my Google Calendar, it's there to me to go, oh, that clashes and I need to move it. <coughs> Excuse me. Whereas, if it's not on your calendar at all, you will suddenly, it, appear, it either ends up on your to-do list where it shouldn't be in the first place, or you'll suddenly realize you have no food and you end up panic buying, and that's how you end up buying bad food or the wrong food, or you end up shopping at a more expensive place to buy food from, or you end up buying just like one meal's worth of food when you actually you could have done multiples and stuff. It's, it's a waste of time and food and packaging and all the things. Like, it's not gonna be the optimal, and yes, don't believe in perfect, but optimal, optimal's a thing. We can go for the best possible result here, people. Best possible result is also good. All these things, all the repeat things. And um, hair appointments, maybe your kid's hair grows really fast and you are religiously there for every four weeks or every six weeks or whatever it is. Get it booked in. Don't leave it on the to-do list. Get it booked in as like a regular thing. To-do list should be more of the one-off things. Now there might be some things on there that repeat and pop up now and again, it might do, but on the whole it should be the one-offs, okay? Tasks are things that consistently repeat. To-do lists are for the one-offs. They're the ones that you can then look at fitting into bits and pieces. Now. I have a really cool way that I really like to run my to-do list and I'm gonna do a whole separate video on that because it needs like the camera facing on the desk and stuff. So that will be coming next month. 
I'm afraid. Um, that'll be coming next month and I will angle the camera down and do all that with showing how I write out my to-do list. And I'm gonna time it with starting a whole new to-do list notepad um, because mine's got like a little bit tatty and torn out so many pages it's sort of falling apart. So I'm gonna treat myself to a nice new notepad and do that. But in the meantime, Take all those tasks off your to-do list, write them on a separate list, and then work out when, it's, when are those regular slots gonna be? Like, when is it regularly gonna happen? Get it in that digital calendar. I do the Google Calendar because that's the one I love. Um, or whatever one you prefer. It's not Google Calendar, okay. But yeah, get those regular things, get them off your to-do list. Don't let them creep back into your to-do list. Watch your to-do list shrink. And then watch how it's so much easier to get everything done as a whole because you're dealing with a shorter list. You're welcome. I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood. And remember that being a super mom is all about being the mom that you want to be. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.